Ireland and the UK have become embroiled in an asylum seeker row after the Westminster government said they will not take back asylum seekers who cross into Ireland unless the EU accepts that they can go back to France, which is not happening anytime soon, is it? So Ireland's Prime Minister, Simon Harris, says that's irrelevant and that there is a deal in place for the UK and we have to honour it. Take a listen. But, to, but just to be very clear, Stephen, there's already an agreement in place since 2020 underpinned uh, in law. I, uh, I understand it, it, that, but just yesterday... Well, it's, very it's very important everybody understands that because there's already an agreement in place between Ireland and Britain. What we're doing is giving legal clarity in relation to that agreement, which will allow us to designate the UK as a safe country again. Look, I feel very sorry for the people of the Republic of Ireland, the ordinary people out there. I want to make that incredibly clear. Um, I, I do, however, think that there's no way, shape on earth, that we should be taking back the illegal migrants who happen to have crossed that border. However, here is a man that I do get on with well as the president of the Irish Freedom Party, is Herman Kelly. Herman, um, look, how annoyed are you with us here in the UK? Are you? Do you understand our position, which is that we don't really want them back? Why would you? And the Irish people certainly don't want it. But you know what? The Irish people are really cheesed off at the minute. Seventy nine percent of the people have had enough of all the immigration that the, our government have allowed into Ireland by giving out free stuff, hand over fist, free housing, medical care, welfare to anybody and everybody who lands in Dublin airport or who comes in through the land border. Uh, it's like the people who are coming, of course they're going to come. Ireland's got an incredibly generous welfare system and it has no functioning deportation system. So with the knowledge that you can go to Ireland, get free stuff and never ever be deported, they'd almost be mad not to come. But we are very, mm. it mm. is Irish government policy which is to blame for what is going on and it's long-standing government policy. They are happy for Ireland to be flooded with this mass immigration. Do you know, five years ago, I made a joke. I, I started to make a joke that Sinn Féin immigration policy, and they're all for EU open borders and mass immigration. Sinn Féin mm. immigration policy, I used to say, was Brits out, everybody else in. Mm. Now it seems, my God, that's not funny anymore. It's not happening. Mm. No, uh, indeed. I, I, I think I read somewhere as well that you let them have work opportunities as well. I mean, you are conceivably more attractive offer than the UK, which is really saying something, actually, considering that we are the land of milk and honey. I mean, people are desperate to travel across an entire continent of other European countries to come to us, and they've managed to find somewhere nearby is even, even better. Yeah, well, look, look at that. We've over 100,000 uh, Ukrainian refugees in Ireland. They, they came, they drove the whole way across Europe, and many, in some instances, and in many instances, with massive SUVs, and they've driven the whole way across. Why would you drive halfway across a continent? Because the welfare payments and the offers of, of accommodation and, and medical care are so generous that you'd mm. almost be mad not to go. Yeah. So, uh, like, the Irish government policy of, like, when you put out a lot of money, you're going to attract these. And that's what's been on the go for some time. Actually, I remember, because I've been involved in Eurosceptic movement for well over 20 years, that after after Irish people voted no to the first Treaty of Nice, that the Irish government, Brian Cowan, wrote a letter of, let's say, comfort to other, these Eastern European countries, that their nationals could come into Ireland before, I think, 2009. Uh, so mm -hmm. it was only uh, Britain, Ireland and Sweden were the only countries in Western Europe to which uh, Eastern Europeans could go. And I call that the funnel effect letter. And that's what's happening again. It's like the funnel effect, free welfare, no deportation, come all ye. And, and I think what's happening now is possibly worse than that because, you know, it's, it's, it's all very well and good people from Ukraine or, or Eastern Europe, etc. you know, coming over. But I think the rapid cult total cultural and demographic change that you're going to get from people from the Middle East and Africa coming. I've got a, I've just got a little clip here, which is, I, I believe, filmed outside some offices uh, in Dublin, which is like a tent city. I'm just going to play that and I'll get you to react off the back of it. Um. Well, the state can, continues to ignore this problem which is just escalating and escalating. It's unbelievable. Talk to me about the population growth, the demographic change, uh, and the strength of anger in Ireland, please, Evan. It is unbelievable. Uh, so since 1985, there's been a population of increase of 1.5 million people in the country. Is now, so it's gone from 3.5 million 
to over 5 million, 5.3 million people. That's 42% increase in less than 30 years. Now, when we started the party five years ago, uh, 12% of the population in Ireland were non-national. It's now, according to official figures, it's now 22%. So in five years, the non-national component of the population has gone up by 10%. So, and that's just the official figures. Mm. And in regards to the demographics of who are these people who are coming here, well, last year in Dublin Airport, over 4,000 people arrived and with no documentation, no passport, or so they said. We don't know their name. We don't know where they came from. We don't know, do they have a crime, even do they have a criminal record? And there, there's been a sharp increase in criminality in Ireland. Like, for example, in 2022, there were 12 murders. Uh, 12 women were murdered, and five of those were murdered by non-national men. So, like, when you, when we don't know who the people are, mm. and especially, as you mentioned, when they come from very different cultures with very different values, it's only a recipe. When, look, look, we're not the first country it's happened to. Look at Germany, look at Italy, look at Spain, or, sorry, France and Sweden, mm, mm. where you take in a lot of huge number of unvetted males, you're almost guaranteed an increase in criminality. Yeah. And 79% of the people now are com- have had enough of immigration into Ireland. And, and, you and that just, is the fault of just government. V- very, very quickly on this, Herman, uh, do you think the general sense of... of- People in in Ireland, they're not they're not that angry with with us over here saying, look, we don't we don't want these people back. Do they kind of understand it? No, it's with the Irish government. Uh, yeah. uh, of course, look, look, every country must act. Every country must act in its own interest. The Irish government are failing to do that. They're the ones responsible. This kind yeah. of uh, self demolition. Uh, because we love Brussels, is madness. It's doing our country damage, and it's got to stop. Herman, thank you very, very much. Take care. That's Herman Kelly, the president of the Irish Freedom Party.